Hi everybody, it's Dandruff with your news cartridges for Wednesday, February 8th, 2017. Welcome back, and today begins with another follow-up to a story that happened earlier in the week. One of our viewers, David James, felt as though I didn't cover the YouTubers who pled guilty to two charges of hosting an illegal gambling site, and I'm always willing to admit that I'm wrong, but in this case, he felt as though I didn't cover that topic enough, and I completely admit I did rush through it. Mr. James would like me to be a little bit more clear that this case took place in the UK, and that the two were charged not with any fraudulent activity that took place on YouTube, but for operating a gambling site and promoting it without a license. James also states that because this did take place in the UK, it could do very little to set a precedent in US law, which I do believe could be correct. But I would hope, and I would hope that he would agree, that this case would be referenced if charges were brought up against the people who took place in the CSGO gambling scandal of last year. Hashtag scambling. Whether or not it's admissible, that's up to the courts. Also noting that Craig Nepenthes Douglas has made some new statements in regards to his charges, quote, it wasn't like I set out to break the law, but I do have to accept judgments of the courts, which I did do fully, and I did break the law. I have been punished for that. Which I have to say, I think is a great attitude for him to have. Have. He's not trying to dodge what happened or deflect onto somebody else. He's just willing to admit that he messed up, which is commendable. David, thank you very much for your very constructive comment. And if anybody feels as though I need to go over something a little bit more detailed, just let me know. And depending on how I feel about it, of course, I will cover it in a future episode. To be fair, I couldn't wait to cover that story about Jeff Kaplan with controllers on console because I do think it's an important issue. And I couldn't wait to shit all over Digital Homicide, but also is already a 10 minute episode. Moving on with the rest of today's episode, though, follow out Shelter, the free-to-play game, is now available on Xbox One and has Xbox Play Anywhere features. Red Out, the spiritual successor to the extremely fast racing game Wipeout, is coming to all console platforms, including Xbox One, PS4, and Nintendo Switch. It'll be there sometime by the end of this year and published by 505 Games. Project Cars 2 has been revealed by Slightly Mad Studios and is set to release on PC, Xbox One, and PS4 sometime late 2017. Another game has been revealed. Well... Sort of. It's coming to us from Playground Games, the same people who made Forza Horizon 3. They have said that they are working on a new game, but other than it's an open world game of sorts, nothing else is currently known about the project. Elder Scrolls Online has had an update and gives players the ability to create their own houses and can be decorated to their own desires. Valentine's Day is just six days away, and Pokemon Go has started their event for the Day of Love today. Trainers can look forward to double the rare candy while catching and hatching a Pokemon, and an increased spawn rate for pink Pokemon like like Chansey, Clefairy and Clefable, and Jigglypuff and Wigglytuff. Our next update news is for Resident Evil 7, which now supports CPUs that don't utilize the SSSE3 instruction set. Yeah, I barely understand what that means either. I'm trying! But what it comes down to is processors before 2006. Truth be told, you shouldn't be gaming on that thing if that CPU is that old. If you're running one, you have a dinosaur, my friend. How's that pay to working out for you? Way to go, Dander, if you're making jokes for like six people. Now this is a first for the first time ever E3 2016. 2017 will be open to the public, but don't get too excited from that statement. Tickets will cost anywhere between 150 and 250 US dollars, and there will only be 15,000 sold. They go on sale next week, Monday, February 13th, and more than likely, if you do not get one on that day, you're not gonna get one. Those who are looking into buying the Battlefield 1 Season Pass will be happy to know that starting today and ending on March 15th, if you buy the Premium Pass, instead you will be granted the Digital Deluxe Edition. However, the bullshit part is if you already own the pass, some people are commenting that you do not get an upgrade. EA, you better fix this because if you're giving it to people who buy it now, then you should retroactively give it to the people who have already given you money. Don't you see that you're screwing them over? And there's a link to their live chat down below, why don't we all go ask them? In a similar story, the recently released PS4 exclusive Neo is having the same kind of issue where owners of the Digital Deluxe Edition, who were supposed to be granted access to the Season Pass, is showing up as not owning the Season Pass. This seems to only be affecting gamers in Europe, and Sony is aware of the issue and is currently working on correcting it. Looks like we don't have to twist any arms on this one. Fucking EA, you better go fix that shit! Overwatch is gonna see some major changes, the first of which will be the addition of a server browser where users can create their own custom game modes to play online with everyone. The much-loved Capture the Flag mode will live on past the Year of the Rooster event in the arcade as its own game mode. And finally for Overwatch, Bastion is getting some major changes. Overall, he is getting buffed, but there are a few places 
places, specifically in his offense where he's getting nerfed. He will no longer be able to cause critical damage in turret mode, but deploying to it will drop by half a second and his bullet spread will increase by 50%. However, you can repair while moving, the magazine for his turret has been increased by 100 rounds and you take 35% less damage while in tank and turret mode. As a Bastion main, I can't wait to try all of this. The server browser, everything. Two more topics to go and one of them is the Nintendo Switch, which Nintendo has put out a new trailer and ultimately it doesn't tell us anything new. Except for Destructoid, who not only said that this trailer shows us what sets the Switch apart, but they go off about how the Switch having three different modes is confusing. What the hell's confusing about it? It's on the dock or it's off the dock with the controllers on or with the controllers off. Destructoid, are you okay, buddy? Well, hopefully this next one from them holds some weight, even though it's written by the same person. Allegedly, there are talks from Tatsumi Kimishima, the CEO of Nintendo currently, about backwards compatibility controllers for the Switch. I assume that means using Wii Motes and the Pro Controller from the Wii U, but here's hoping. It's been announced that there are 28 games packaged into 1-2 Switch, and one of them happens to be a game where you coddle your Switch as it cries like a baby. Yeah, that's what we all want as a video game. To be parents. Finally, for the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo believes that the Switch will have better third-party support than the Wii U did. I mean, it's got to, right? You can't have less than none. Our final topic, I will admit, gave me a chuckle at first, but then I read more than the headline and realized how horrifying it is, as a CSGO player has been banned for a thousand years from Counter-Strike. Malicious activity is the reason cited, but the deeper reason for such a harsh penalty is because this guy, who goes by the name Bloom, is fucking sick. There are chat logs, which I'm actually not going to have a direct link to, there is a link through a Kotaku article listed down below. They're so bad that I cannot in good faith link directly to them. The things he says are very disturbing, like how there is, quote, something about being able to influence young minds, and is also very direct about how he doesn't care that he is a pedophile, and there's even a picture of himself masturbating. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that one. I originally thought this was just about a guy who said something stupid, like kill yourself, but after reading, no, this is not that at all. This is way worse. He has been banned from his esports team armor esports and cannot compete in the esea any longer i'm not really sure what else to say about this guy other than he knew he had a problem and didn't go seek help for it and i feel like i should say something else i don't know this guy bloom but if you do or you have any stories you want to share about him let me know in the comment section down below well, I'm not really sure how you transition from there, so let's just move on to tomorrow's game releases for pc cult of cthulhu olympic bloody boobs listen they get two and then i never show them again Quarantine, Queen's Quest 2, Stories of Forgotten Past, Lamb, John Wick Chronicles, We Are Chicago, Alone With You, Greyhound Manager 2, Rebooted, and Aeneas Roguelike, Convicted Galaxy, Jump to Die, Expert, and The Barbarian and the Subterranean Caves. For Nintendo Wii U, Plantera, Brick Race, and YASG. For Nintendo 3DS, Plantera. Thank you very much, everybody. This has been News Cartridge. I am Dandruff. I will see you tomorrow. And I tried to start an online bakery, but I accidentally deleted all my cookies. So originally today, we were going to talk about 1-2 Switch, and then I read that article, and I was like, oh my god, people need to know more about this. Wow. That, I hope stuff like that doesn't happen very often. Thankfully, it really doesn't. Uh, I'm gonna go make Sloppy Joes for dinner. Yum, delicious. If you don't know what a Sloppy Joe is, go look it up. They're wonderful. Uh, social media links are over here. Click over here to subscribe. Click over here for yesterday's episode. By the way, Monday's episode has almost 500 views. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. See you tomorrow. Bye, bye, bye. Bye.